So I've had all kinds of 3D printers over the years. I've had this CR10 Max. Um, I had quite a bit of issues with it. This right here is a Ningda one. It lets you print in two different colors. And then recently, Anchormate sent me this one right here, which is supposed to be a multicolor option as well. So for this video, I was promised both the V6 and the M5 printer. I have been promised up and down that the V6 has delays and will be coming for a follow-up video. So you should see that follow-up video shortly. But I wanna talk about a couple of my pros and cons of this printer and what I like and what I don't like about it. Now, I do wanna give credit where credit's due. I think there are only like really one major design flaw that I have with this and my experience had two little caveats in it. But overall, for a new printer out of the box, nothing arrived broken, nothing arrived smashed. So I think I give that credit already. So let's talk about my main issue. And that is the filament runout sensor is in this box, yet the extruder is over here, which means that you have a situation where you may, you know, be accidentally, you know, something breaks inside, you press the filament in, it pushes the runout sensor, but the extruder still extrudes out the remaining and there is nothing going through the extruder, even though there says that there's filament. I actually ended up updating my firmware to find out that there was a lot more of the AI detection feature I actually can detect this. And it ended up detecting some of these issues, especially this run out. So I actually downgrade this from being such a serious problem down to something just to be aware of and also make sure your firmware is up to date. As an issue with a big wad of melted plastic in the nozzle before I even used it, came out of the box, big wad of melted plastic in it. Don't know what's up with that, um, but I didn't have any issue other than that. Also, the filament that came from Anchor, the little roll that came with it, um, got kinked, and uh, I'm very careful to make sure that I don't let things unroll. Uh, very surprising in that regard as well. I was not expecting um, that to happen, and that also resulted in like the filament breaking and you know running out as well, but at least that gave me a warning. Um, so let's talk about the pros. Well, first off, this prints at up to 500 millimeters per second. With default settings at the 500 millimeters per second, I was able to get 27 minutes for a Benchy. If you knock everything else down, you get closer to about 17 minutes for a full Benchy, which compared to a lot of printers that that may take, especially this quality, up to like an hour, uh, that's actually pretty solid. The app and user interface is very nice. Uh, you get notified when filament runs out, when prints get done things like that. And I actually, I, I genuinely do appreciate how easy that is to use. You can print remote wirelessly. It connects to the, uh, your router. It basically acts like more like a smart printer uh, compared to a lot of these that have to have like SD cards put in them. The touch interface is pretty solid, but I end up not really using it. Um, it does let you know when you turn this on, how much time is remaining on the print. Um, that's the only thing I really use and that's in passing glances. I check my phone, I check the app on the computer and I, that's what I end up using. The print surface, the automatic bed leveling is phenomenal. You end up with basically prints that always come off. The prints just pop right off, but they never come. I haven't had a single print that I printed that actually ended up like peeling off unexpectedly. The prints are always pretty solid and it always does a really good job with fully sticking to the bed. Sound wise, it is a little bit loud. I've had some printers that are completely silent that don't even have like any noise. Uh, and by any noise, I mean anything audible other than this background noise. Um, but I've also had some printers that are very loud. I'd say this is about medium. It's not super loud, but it also is not something that I could leave on and record a video with. See, I worked on this adapter for the gimbal, printed some counterweights, some things like that, something for this little camera here. And I was you know, pleasantly surprised with print speeds at that 250 millimeters per second is actually pretty solid. I find that that is, uh, the quality is phenomenal at that point but it also does have that really nice high speed option as well if you're a little less worried about quality. Um, for tight tolerances like this, that was kind of what I needed. I found that assembly, this was pretty solid. It came out of the box really well packaged. I've had printers like the one behind me where like parts are sheared off, like metal is sheared off. Um, the print, like the printer arrives completely trashed. Um, and that's also something that I didn't think would happen with this one. Um, and I don't think, you know, it's not like a one-off thing either. I think that the packaging was really well done. And quite frankly, I like it a lot of how well packaged it was. I didn't worry about like some, you know, run out sensor or some uh, bound sensor getting like accidentally sheared off. Happened to this one before. Everything is also really nice machined aluminum, which I say that like a lot of printers usually have some nice aluminum parts, but like everything is machined in here. Everything is really well and sturdy here. And honestly, the screw mounting mechanism, you have three screws um, that are like triangularly opposed. Uh, sometimes printers just think it's smart to put two. And then of course you have some wobble that occurs. Um, but overall, 
besides just the filament runout sensor being there and maybe some options to detect, you know, maybe nothing's printing, um, I really found that this was pretty awesome as well. Um, but the, the camera on this has a little light. You can let you see in the dark. It actually does pretty good, um, but it's not something you could use for like a time-lapse quality. I definitely think that like addition-wise, they could have some type of cable that lets me put like a camera or something to do like time-lapses. I think that would be good. I like how easy this is to just print. The bed, the bed leveling issues are something that's common across a lot of 3D printers that I've looked at and not an issue here at all. Um, every single thing that I've printed, as you know, long as I clean the plate, uh, printed flawlessly. So it sticks to the bed. The bed is really good. Um, support stuff, I didn't mention that earlier, but I had a couple prints that I did some bridging and supports with, um, and those were also really good. Um, bridging, I was able to get like a good couple inches uh, across and without really much issue. Um, so the bridging is actually really solid. Um, other printers that would not have happened. I actually really like this printer. This is something that I'd probably recommend as long as you know you make sure that you checked that you have filament in there and probably stick around for a little bit while you're printing or you're changing filament. Just make sure you got all. The nozzle, I didn't also mention this, but I had like kind of recorded this a couple times. Um, the nozzle, taking apart the whole assembly, especially with the stuff that was stuck in there, um, was not like it was only like six or so screws. And compared to a lot of the other printers that I've looked at, um, that's very little and it was very easy to get in there and like do maintenance on. Um, so if you're at least somewhat technically savvy with your hands or at least willing to take things apart, it's not something that's really easy to break. It's all machine metal and it's actually really easy to get in there and like clean stuff out. So I give it credit where to credit it's due. This, this, the nozzle was very thoroughly designed and I really like the, the assembly for it. They could have just put in the filament runout sensor in the nozzle assembly as well. There will be a follow-up V6 review. Um, I was promised up and down that that should happen. Um, and of course, sometimes companies make these promises and they don't deliver. So I'll of course include the link whenever I get it down below. If you don't see a link in a couple months for that V6 color module, uh, that means the company lied. I don't think Anchor would, um, but just in the odd case that they do uh, and you don't see that color module, um, just keep that in mind before you purchase if they're doing that to the YouTuber. Um, what are they gonna to do to the customer? So uh, yeah, I don't think they will. Um, so just keep that in mind. And of course, if there's some other update that they give me, uh, I'll of course include that down below as well. But uh, that video should be in the description. You can take a look at that. And that will be of course the color module, which I'm really excited to take a look at. But overall, I don't really have any major objections to this. Um, and this has been my like main use printer for the last couple days now that I've had this. I've been printing all kinds of gizmos um, at that really small high detail high quality kind of layer size.